Welcome back. The most embarrassing moment for an extension developer is after cutting their first package and tweeting it to the world and then they're flooded with reports of things not installing, not working and white screens of death. This is our last lesson before we hit the code and we'll look at ways to coax errors to the surface before you deploy extensions to your user community or customers. So what can we do to reduce the risk of such embarrassment? We can start in Global Configuration and move to the System tab. Have a look in the Debug Settings box. The first thing to change is the Debug System setting. Change this to Yes and save the configuration. The main purpose for this is so that if an SQL error occurs, it will throw an error page. I see so many silly errors in custom extensions just because developers have not tested with this setting on, particularly during installation of their extension. After saving, the thing you'll notice is a heap of output at the bottom of the page. This is actually generated by the debug plugin and we'll have a closer look at that shortly. The next step we'll look at is debug language. When you turn this on, the screen goes a bit strange. What do all the stars mean? Well, the stars are actually a good thing. Stars mean that the text that is displaying is being run through the Joomla translation system and that there is a matching translation. If you see a pair of double question marks, it means that the string is trying to be translated, but the translation can't be found. Finally, if you don't see anything around a string of text or a phrase, that text is not being translated at all. For now, we'll just turn this off again because all the bling can get annoying after a while. The last debug setting is debug modules. And this is a new setting in Joomla 1.6 that allows the site owner to turn off the tp equals 1 URL argument that shows the template positions. This one is not really interesting to us at the moment, so we'll leave it alone. The last thing we can do in this tab is increase the session lifetime. I usually set this to 1500 minutes so that while I'm spending time in the code or getting that next cup of coffee, my session doesn't time out and log me out. One saving grace of 1.6 is the fact that if you are logged out, you'll return to the page you were on. Let's move to the server tab. There's a very important setting here called error reporting. You'll need to set this to maximum. By default, most PHP servers don't display any errors, and by setting it to maximum, Joomla forces the server to display them. If we don't do this and we get a fatal error, all you'll get is a totally useless white screen of death. The next thing to remember is to set your time zone offset. This is so that when you are storing dates, you can check that they are being converted correctly, because we always store dates in GMT. That's all we need to do in Global Configuration. So we can save those settings and go to the Plugin Manager. Well, let's try that again. OK, we're looking at the Debug plugin. This plugin collects information when the Debug system setting is turned on. Put Debug into the search filter so we can find it quickly, and then click to edit it. OK, there's a few things to look at here. First thing is that this plugin can be configured to only be available to certain user groups. This means that you, as a super administrator, can be testing the site while leaving the site free of diagnostics for your regular visitors. Next is a setting that will show profiling. There are a number of markers in the Joomla code that record the time a step takes and also the memory used. This setting shows you that information and you can use it as a guide for how efficient a particular process is. Next is a setting to show the SQL queries that have been executed to display the page. This can be useful for tracking down query problems or simply to detect when there are too many queries being run for a page. The last setting in the block is to display the memory used to generate the page. In practice, I generally have all these turned off, unless I'm doing some optimization. Now, move down to the language options because there are some really cool features in there. This first setting allows you to see if there are errors when PHP parses the INI language files. We'll cover the INI files in Unit 2, but I'll just mention now it's very easy to introduce syntax errors in them that prevent them from parsing. Next is a setting that allows you to see what language files are being loaded in the code and also whether they were loaded successfully. 
Show Language String allows you to see the language strings that are being run through the translation system but do not have a corresponding translation. The output is a suggested line that you can simply cut and paste into the appropriate INI file. This is a really cool feature to allow you to mop up translation strings in just a couple of steps. The remaining settings just help you tune how those suggestions are displayed, using those settings effectively as a topic for another day. For now though, we'll disable the plugin so we don't clutter the display for our next unit, which is where we start looking at the component design. See you real soon.